Hello, I'm Amara Rasgis with Consulting Specifying Engineer, and I'm here today with Bhavesh Patel from ASCO, a Schneider Electric business. Thanks so much for joining me today, Bhavesh. Can you tell me a little bit of background about what you do with ASCO? Yeah, so thank you again for uh, the conversations, Amara. I am in charge of the marketing organization at ASCO. Marketing involves the traditional marketing activities as well as the customer care, customer support functions. I've been with ASCO now for almost 21 years and have been in this position now for almost six years, handling the marketing and uh, customer care organization for uh, ASCO globally. Okay, so a lot of good background. And that actually takes me to my very first question, which is a very broad question. Um, how has COVID-19 affected you? How is it affecting ASCO and your marketplace and really your customers and your interaction with your customers? So COVID has definitely uh, had a huge impact on, on ASCO as a business. Uh, luckily, we were identified as an essential business, so the manufacturing activity continued, but offices were closed down. And a good chunk of what we sold in the first few weeks of COVID was to the healthcare space. And so I'm gonna talk a little more about the healthcare impact that we saw due to COVID. Uh, so for example, telemedicine. We think telemedicine accelerated because of COVID by at least five years, uh, maybe even a little longer, because this was a concept that had some uh, R&D type activity. Uh, people were still looking at the proof of concept and uh, all the pieces were not aligned or all the pieces were not in place. And here you were kind of forced into doing telemedicine because the normal healthcare had to also continue on top of the COVID response. And uh, visiting doctors was not as feasible as before. So, so that's the first thing we've seen in immediate impact of COVID uh, from, from one of the largest segments that we cater to. Uh, you know, the other element of the, the telemedicine is that it brings the safety reliability as, uh, aspects, it has the convenience aspect, and it continues to extend the digital footprint that the healthcare industry is focused on. So, so those are some of the things that we have seen as an immediate impact of COVID. Uh, some of it, I think, is here permanently. Right. Yeah. Good point. So then tell me a little bit more about long term. What do you expect COVID-19 will do to shape your market in the long term? So some, again, continuing on the healthcare uh, theme for a minute, uh, we do see the hospitals and, and buildings in general, and I'll come to the buildings shortly, but we do see the hospital as, as, a, as a building changing. Uh, we see nursing home as a facility changing. Uh, you may have heard in the news uh, about some nursing homes being shut down and the care still has to continue. So there is a need to shift away from a nursing home environment to a home care or an aid environment. Well, aid is not available 24 seven. So that brings a lot of automation into that nursing care aspect. Uh, and, and, and so the buildings themselves are also changing, right? The, the buildings of tomorrow would be a lot different from the buildings of yesterday. We see a lot more multi-purpose buildings coming up because the, the work from home or the remoteness of the working environment, which historically was limited to the technology industry is now widespread. So unless you have to be physically in a manufacturing environment or, or, or something similar, you work remotely as much as possible. And so that changes the shape and the, the footprint of the building. Uh, there will be a lot more building automation because the buildings have to be more efficient, they have to become more safe, the air movement in the building has to be revisited, uh, the, the uh, humidity in the building because that gives rise to a lot of the, the diseases or the sickness, that has to be revisited. So all of that can happen with the building automation, which we see a lot more happening in the coming future than what may have happened in the past. Uh, and, and so these things will make building more safer and healthier in general. There is also going to be a lot more research, we think, in improving their occupant experience. Uh, that occupant experience will also be extended to existing buildings. So there will be a lot of retrofitting of the existing buildings to improve that 
our coupon experience. So these are some of the things that we have seen a uh, little bit of change in the last three months, but some of the changes have been kind of in the sidelines and this COVID situation has given it impetus to accelerate those changes. Uh, we also think that the, the need for home being a workplace is gonna have an impact on, on, on the technology and the footprint of technology. So if five years ago, a home was purely a place where you go and, and enjoy with family and relax and, and go to bed and, and have personal belongings, now that lines are blurring. And the digitization is becoming more important in a residential environment. And with the digitization, I think it brings a lot of other technology elements into even the residential environment. So, so these are some of the larger changes that we see happening in the industry. Right, so it sounds like technology taking off is going to be a huge trend. Technology is going to change our lives and, right. and for the better. Right, so let's switch gears a little bit. What about personnel? What about people? What kinds of new requirements will have to be implemented for these people to work in these new updated buildings? So, so there will be a lot more collaboration, right? And, and I'll give you an example of how the whole vaccine development has happened. Five years ago, this would have been unheard of or, or a, a foreign concept. But today, something happens in the research lab in US, immediately that is known to the research folks in UK or in China or in Singapore, and the collaboration continues 24 seven. So the people's adoption of technology the people's comfort level with collaboration, the people's comfort level dealing with somebody halfway around the world in a digital mindset, I think is, is becoming the norm than the, the, the uh, sort of the unique situation two years ago. And, and, and that is going to change a lot of people's uh, digital footprint, personal digital footprint. Uh, the speed over perfection is also getting renewed focus. So again, vaccine is a perfect example. Right now, we cannot wait to go through the, the three-year or four-year typical uh, development cycle, right? So, so you have to parallel path a lot of the activities and you have to take chances and you have to make sure that you start thinking about steps five, six, and seven, even when you're just looking at step one, right? So, so the speed over perfection definitely is, is becoming a, a, a different phenomena today than it was two years ago. And, and this digitization that becomes kind of our everyday life experience is also creating a lot of future self-help models that people have to become comfortable with. Again, you know, the, the WebMDs were out there five years ago, 10 years ago. But now, with the telemedicine, the WebMDs have become more comfortable experience for the consumer than they were five, 10 years ago. So when you start to spread that across all other industries, people will want and almost demand that self-help experience in the future because the digitization, the speed element, which gets into their DNA and they want that DNA experience kind of extended across their work life as well, not just in their personal life. So I think people's needs and wants and desires will change and, and speed is definitely a huge element of that change. Right, right. So then how will your relationship and ASCO's relationship change with consulting engineers? How will you communicate with them or become the web MD that ASCO needs to be? So in the three months of lockdown, we have not been able to go out and visit the consulting engineers in person. But that has not stopped us from having continuous engagement with that community. We engage with them in a digital format. We have created 3D models of our environment or our offer in an environment and how does it fit. So we can visually show a consulting engineer what that final output that they're working on looks like or could look like. We have had continuous engagement through webinars. Uh, because the consulting engineers continue to uh, want to brush up on their knowledge, especially in some cases when there was a little bit of a slowdown, they wanted to even accelerate their learning. So we have had that constant conversation. So the engagement 
activities have continued, I would say even accelerated in this lockdown, just that they're not in physical terms, they're more in the digital terms. Okay, how do you think that's going to drive productivity or how do you think that's going to change productivity in maybe the next six or 12 months? It, so, so extend the digitization across the economy and, and consulting community gets involved in a lot of the economy, right? So we think that the digitization, the electrification, which again had something started two, three years ago, as you probably know, the California law, which mandates that after 2025, a certain percentage of the homes built will not have any other energy source other than electricity, right? So electrification is out there. Digitization has been continuing and this accelerated that pace and decentralization has continued. So rather than have one big supply chain or one big electric plant or one big something, you probably start to think about a distributed resource or a distributed supply chain so that that one big has a problem, you're not impacting the entire community. So with that digitization, the engineering community will also start to adopt models where they can start developing 3D modeling. They can build a digital facility first before they start breaking ground. Some of it probably was happening today, but it was done more from a verification standpoint. Now they could even start doing this from an aesthetic standpoint. And the digitization doesn't mean that everything has to be done by one engineer, right? So there will be a lot more collaboration. The collaboration activity can extend beyond the engineering office, but the results would be of benefit to everybody. So, so I think the digitization also increases the stakes for every stakeholder playing a role in this economic community. From a consulting community that we're interested in, whether it's a consulting engineer or a contractor or a distributor or a building owner or a facility manager, they all will collaborate on that common platform because digital footprint allows them to collaborate. They all will look at that 3D building first before starting to break ground so that they know exactly what they want and everybody has a say and a stake in that final outcome. Okay, and I know you spend a lot of time on behalf of ASCO and Schneider Electric traveling the globe, really working with the global economy. Um, do you see changes in the next one to three years, uh, you know, recovery changes, or uh, how do we better prepare for this? What can consulting engineers do to prepare for the next time this happens, if it happens? Yeah, and, and that's a great question. And, and I don't know if there is an ideal preparation, right? I mean, even this pandemic, now everybody is bringing up things that, say Bill Gates said or someone else said that if we had followed five years ago, maybe we could have prevented this. So I don't know if there is an ideal way to truly prevent the next pandemic. But again, the elements of digitization that allows you to create that 360 view of whatever it is that you're working on, that brings everybody onto a common platform, that creates a single pane of glass view for every complexity that you need to look at, I think will better prepare us for the next whatever, whether it's a pandemic or whatever, something else. Uh, and, and, and I think those are the elements that the consulting community will continue to invest in and I think benefit from, because there's a lot of efficiency benefits that also come out as a, as a, on the side when you adopt digitization and you adopt a lot of the tools. Uh, so, so I think the, Previous driver may have been efficiency. Now the driver might be that we need to be able to collaborate in a digital platform and the side benefit might be the efficiency. Right, right. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Um, just one more question for you. So again, engineers talking about commercial construction. How is ASCO, how are you helping engineers and engineering firms work to get back to a better economy, again, looking out one year, two years, three years, what can you do? What can your firm do to help? So one of the things that we have started looking at is, you know, standardization because speed thing I spoke about. 
to get a building constructed fast, or even during this lockdown, when the hospitals wanted to put up extensions to meet the, the surging demand of patient care, well, you could not start constructing a building extension, right? So we created modular solutions in containers that you can drop onto the job site, you can make a couple of connections, and off you go. These containers can be created in a factory environment where the social distancing rules maybe are easier to follow than it might be on a job site. So these are some of the things that I think will be accelerated even more. The, the building automation that I spoke about. Today, the building automation in some cases might be a niche application, but tomorrow I see that as a mainstream application. And the consulting community will see the benefit of building automation because that allows them to react quickly to a changing scenario. So, you know, the modularization, the standardization, the automation surrounding the building environment, which in the, in the past may only be limited to engineering side. Now you try and you use it on the operation side. All of these things are what will help get back to the normal environment fast. I think it will also help the engineering and the consulting community because they are going to play a key role in giving that comfort feeling to the occupants of the building that the building they're asking them to occupy is safe and, and healthy. And, and so the consulting community also is looking at ways to quickly deploy solutions that gets the building closer to being healthier today than it was three months ago. And, uh, and so some of these modularization building automation elements are something that they are also considering. So I think combination will, will get the community back to normal, quote unquote, faster than, than otherwise. Interesting, yeah, those are some great insights. And thank you, uh, Bhavesh, I appreciate your time today. Bhavesh Patel is with ASCO, a Schneider Electric business. And I'm Amara Razgis with Consulting Specifying Engineer. Thank you so much for spending a bit of time with us today. We appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much.